up in Atlanta on Friday. Ni Nima Romani is a former federal prosecutor and the president of West Coast Trial Lawyers. Uh, Nima, so I just want to start from your perspective on the hearing itself. Did you see enough evidence at this hearing to disqualify her from that Georgia election subversion case? Omar, I don't think so. And even based on Judge McAfee's questions, he was asking, well, even if this happened, even if Willis and Wade started their relationship in 2021 before Wade was hired, is that enough for that to be a financial conflict of interest that merits disqualification? He said, this may just be an ethics violation and a state bar disciplinary issue. Yeah, and just painting those lines right off the bat like that could be an indication of uh, of how he's thinking here. But there also is the there are the implications that one because this is not happening in a vacuum and it's on uh, in the middle of a campaign cycle and election year and all that in between. Um, regardless of if, she, of if she stays on, do you feel confident that the credibility of this case will remain intact whenever a trial date is actually set for this? Omar, I think Fonnie Willis should step down. There's a cloud over the proceedings, and there's a perception that this whole trial is already politicized. She's a public servant. She should be held to a higher standard. And frankly, she shouldn't be hiring her boyfriend as a special prosecutor in the case. Now, my thoughts or the public's thoughts does not necessarily require legal disqualification. So that's why I think she's going to stay on. But the way she's handled this case has been botched from the beginning. She was the last to file. She charged 19 co-defendants, 15 of which remain. So now that this whole proceeding has taken place, there's almost no chance that this case will go to trial before the November general election. And that, of course, is is the dynamic that a lot of folks are, are watching here. Obviously, Trump is facing a lot of cases, not just at the state level, but at the federal level as well. And so the question is, will he face any of these actual trials before the election? The one common strategy for Trump's legal team, though, at this point, has been delay, delay, delay. And, and so far, it does seem to be working. And so I'm curious for you, you mentioned uh, the, this particular Georgia state case, but do you see any of these criminal cases happening before the November election? Omar, I think the only case that we're going to see is the hush money trial in New York that's slated to start next month, because that's the only case that isn't affected by the Supreme Court's appeal that they're going to be hearing in late April. And of course, we're going to get a decision in June or July that relates to presidential immunity. And that's even though it's related to just the D.C. election fraud case, it will also affect the South Florida classified documents case and potentially the Fulton County case as well. And like you said, the defense has been very effective, not on the substance necessarily, but on the procedure, grounding these proceedings to a halt or at least at a snail's pace. And therefore, if the president wins, all those criminal problems may go away. Yeah, and the delay tactic has seemed to to pay off for him politically as well as it keeps this in the headlines. And there are cases that he mentions at, at many of the rallies out on the campaign trail uh, as well. But that's a whole separate discussion. Nima Romani, I got to leave it there. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me, Omar. Of course.